<laughs> the murder at the Excelsior Hotel is a scenario pack for Arkham Harry. Let's just unbox it and see what's inside. So, first of all, we have the die book with the symbol on expansion. It uh, tells you about how to add it to the campaign, the uh, difficulty settings, the extra rules such as patrol, which uh, is pretty fun in this game mode. Also has a true culprit, which is another agenda card, which I'll uh, go through and get to it. Uh, it has six encounter sets, Mertz also a hotel, Alien Interference, Dark Rituals, Excelsior Management, Sins of the Past, and Valid Experiments. Now, there's quite a lot there to, to take in, but you only really use the first one, and that's got the bulk of the encounter cards. The rest change based on how the game plays. Now, it's quite a bit of a lengthy intro there, but if you enjoy the lore, enjoy reading, it's, it's a good story, it's a true murder mystery um, to cover the culprit. Setup guides, and without spoiling it too much, how the game works. That's the guidebook. We have the guide card for the chaos tokens, the easy standard and hard expert mode, as you can see there. We have the encounter deck. Now you have the uh, murder at the hotel symbol. This is the bulk of the cards, such as uh, guests and staff, officers, and uh, Different uh, things based on themes of a murder at a hotel, such as blood in your hands, uh, driven to madness, evidence cards, uh, there's stuff like humanoid, guests, innocence, which will spawn. A lot of these cards here don't actually attack you, they've all got like aloof, uh, innocent cards. And this is a kind of game a lot about, based on consequences. Um, and there's lots of ways the game can resolve based on how you act. So there's the. Uh, cards, the next set there, and they all change depending on how you play the game, so we'll go through that next, that's the encounter deck, so you, you do get quite a lot in this small pack, which I'm quite impressed with. We have location cards, there's plenty of these, as you can see here, there's plenty of locations, all based in a hotel, so you have different rooms, uh, foyer, roof, basement, second floor hotel, restaurant, balcony, office, and more rooms, which are all great, they're all different, they all have different effects, it isn't just like a basic room of clues, you've all got special uh, spawns, like spawn items and um, individual actions plus victory conditions on too, it's great. Um, we also have, this is an item, Bloodstained Dagger, this is what you start the game with. It's uh, it's basically how the game starts, you, you've, you had the Bloodstained Dagger on you, which is what starts the whole, the whole game off, you know, it, it was it you, did you commit the crime, sort of like a bit of intrigue there. Uh, we also have now these are great cards, these are called lead cards. There's five leads, now what you're going to do in the game is you're going to spend the game going from room to room and trying your best to acquire a lead by drawing the top card of a lead deck, so you shuffle the extra bag of different leads each time. Once you get two leads you're going to succeed and then the encounter cards based off what leads you've got, so you have stuff like a time war locket, a sister solution, two of rituals, a miser's key and an alien device. So each one there if you can see has the appropriate uh, encounter set. Seal of Lord to go with them. Next, we have the act deck. Now, the first act is quite simple. You just spend clues as a group, draw cards. Once you've got two leads, you advance. So, once you have two leads, the card flips. And then, based on what leads you've acquired, you'll shuffle counter cards. In there, as you can see, there it says uh, if you have certain ones at the key, you shuffle the security into the counter deck. For the locket, shuffle the chilling presence of the counter deck, which is pretty cool. And then for the last act, you're going to mostly just try to place clues. You're going to spend the game going for the hotel, dodging enemies, uncovering mysteries, and trying to place clues on your leads to get to the solution. Once you've done that, oh sorry, the next is the agenda card, which is just basically the police sort of interfering and trying to get a hold of you and there's a lot of things as well based on uh, your act like I say it's a lot about consequences because when the, when this is flipped over if you didn't clean up the blood hit the body tie the room and certain actions in certain rooms as I said in the encounter location cards will change um, and the last uh, agenda if you fail this uh, you fail sort of the crime there's a different ending 
but mostly you won't do that. You'll get to the last one. Now, these are the true culprit agenda cards. These are sort of weird agenda cards that change based on what you've done so far. So say if you had the Major's Key in a locket, you did a certain story aspect, you get a different culprit each time. And what was great about these are they're all different. Some might be some might spawn a eventual spirit or a large monster in the hotel, some might be more easy going than that, and more about investigating. Uh, each one has different objectives, so there's, I think there's uh, 10 culprit cards here. Someone such as Fetters Defeated, you advance. Some might, some might be getting rid of cultist enemies, some might be getting rid of horror from certain enemies, there's just lots of different uh, variations. And then you go back to the story and it tells you how it resolved. I love this set because it feels like a true murder mystery, a true uh, investigation. You do feel like you're at a hotel and something's gone wrong and you're trying to cover a mystery of what happened. You're going to spend your time going from room to room. A lot of enemies spawn aloof and patrol, so they're going to, you're going to be going from room to room trying to cover clues, enemies are going to patrol, not necessarily attacking you, but a lot of enemies will sort of take clues, move items around, so you're trying to like chase them down and you're trying to figure things out. At the same time, you've got the looming threat if, if you spawn a large enemy on the counter decks. And I love how the resolution can change depending on what items you get. I mean, I've played three games and every single time I've got a different outcome, completely different outcome, depending on what culprit i found. You can do things like you have to resolve by telling, um, sorry, the last cards here. You know, ally cards, just Sergeant one row. Um, this is one of the guys that spawns in the game. You can uh, try and recruit him. You can try and, um, at one point in the campaign, you have to tell him what you've done, if you've done certain things, like in certain rooms, and progress differently. There's also a weakness card there, that you can run to the game. Uh, each location has separate actions on it. You can see there, all different sort of tests, See, there's got three tests on that one. This is where you start from. As you can see here, you want to test different things. So you want to spend your time trying to hide the evidence of what you've done in the room, which will affect the story later on. Certain ones let you uh, put clues on items, because how you advance is you collect the leads, you're trying, to, you, you're trying to go from each room to room, trying to find the clues to put on the leads and advance the story. And if you have two leads in each story, you get a different ending because the police will assist you. Um, Plenty of great encounter cards here, such as hotel staff. If I go through some of the uh, non-hotel ones, can have a quick look at them. See, these are ones related to the vengeful spirits. You can see there are the cards, pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of uh, Elaine from Insidious. Uh, harvested brain, such as weird experiments going on in the hotel rooms. The meddler, which is a elite monster, which is a, you know, quite tough enemy, the Dimensional Shambler, uh, from the Cthulhu uh, stories, which is a cool idea, and general and general uh, hotel cards there, which are sort of like a different story. Each, each one's a different story in its own. You know, you never get, you'll probably never get the same encounter cards twice. You'll shuffle in, you'll get a, you know, one game you'll be trying to fight a spectre, trying to cover the history of a spectre, and maybe trying to stop an unworldly threat. And each one relates differently to how the game resolves, and that's a great, that's a great game to play standalone, uh, as well as putting into a, a campaign at any point you like. Uh, it takes roughly 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how many players you have, what decks you're using. Um, and it's real fun working together with friends, trying to discover the mysteries and kind of see what's happened at the hotel. And it just creates a great feeling of, uh, you know, stuck in this hotel, going from room to room and trying to work out what's going on in the game. And a definitely one to recommend for the price and the amount of content you get inside it. Plenty of cards. It just it's a really great setting to play and it fits the Arkham um, mythology really well and I recommend definitely getting this game. And lastly, there's just a lot of uh, resolutions I won't go through so you can't read them and spoil it for yourself but there's just a lot of ways the game can turn out different resolutions, different truths, different uh, discoveries and it makes for a great replayability. It's a great game to just keep playing again and again there's so many outcomes you're going to want to keep playing to get different ones and see what happens uh, any questions about this uh, scenario, just uh, feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.